The central boiler outdoor furnaces, particularly the E-Classics and the Classic Edge, uh, which are known as the high efficiency furnaces, um, they don't require a lot of maintenance, but the maintenance that is, re that is required is, is very important. So the purpose of, of me explaining to you a little bit of what you, what you can do to make your furnace last longer, um, that's the whole, the whole purpose of, of what we're trying to do here. Um, today I'm gonna show you a little bit about the actual mechanics of it and a little bit of maintenance that goes along with it. Um, on the edge furnace, the, the, uh, the controls are up front in the E-Classic series, they're in the back, but they're the, the same, exact same setup with the exact, the exact same components. So basically just pop off the outer cover, open up the inner door, and in here you're gonna see one combustion fan and three solenoids, okay? The air is introduced in, and these solenoids are opening at different times, letting air into the firebox uh, when it's needed. Uh, the maintenance part of it, which we're talking about today, first off, the fan. Uh, the fan actually has two oil ports on it. And once a year, typically when you shut it down in spring, uh, there's on the Classic Edge, there's just two bolts that hold the fan on. On the E-Classic, there's four bolts, but it's very easy to take off. Just a plug-in connector. So disconnect it, pull it out. And on the back side of the fan, you'll see two oil ports. Each of those oil ports require a little three-in-one oil, typically about 10 drops in each port. Um, put her back on and you're good for the year. On top of the fan, you have your three solenoids. Which you basically have one right here. The solenoids, the only maintenance required on these is a squirt of WD-40 on the actual plunger. Um, and it's a good idea, again, to do that in spring uh, when you shut it down. Um, these little, like I say, these are very easy things to do, but they're important and it'll make your investment last a whole lot longer. Today I want to talk a little bit about the water quality and how important it is to put the right water in your central boiler furnace. Um, the initial filling of the furnace after we get done with the installation is obviously the most important part. Uh, first off, we're going to check the pH of your well water. And if the pH is within check, um, we're going to add that as long as there's no other known water quality issues. Uh, the other thing we want to make sure we put in is soft water when you're filling the outdoor furnace. Uh, soft water is just a lot easier on the steel than hard water. Um, if you don't have a water softener, we actually have pre-charge uh, canisters, just an inline canister that uh, puts soft water into the furnace. So um, no problem there. Um, once it's initially filled and you're up and running it, uh, spring and fall, twice a year, you want to do a simple water test. And every central boiler is going to come with a simple test kit like this. It's less than a five minute test. Um, it'll do two things. It's going to check the pH of your water and it's also going to check how much of the initial corrosion inhibitor that we dumped in. Uh, every furnace is going to get uh, a gallon or possibly two gallons of this dumped in and that's treating for the corrosion um, inside the water jacket. And this test is going to tell you that each year. So uh, one of the biggest things of the furnace, do your water test and uh, get the most life out of the furnace that you can. Today we're going to talk a little bit about door adjustment and uh, maintaining the door seal of the, uh, of the door on the furnace. The uh, high efficiency furnaces, like the classic edge here, and including the E-Classics, require an airtight seal for the combustion process to work properly. So what happens is we have a silicone type seal here, and it's important to keep that, that adjustment proper. Um, and what you want is when you close your door of your furnace, you should always feel some tension on the hinge side before it actually makes the actual latch. And then when you latch it, it should have a nice, a nice snap to it like this. If you, start to, if you start to lose that feel of that tension on the hinge side, it's a simple process of popping out the hinge pin one at a time, let the door drop back, loosen up the jam nut, and thread it in a little bit. Usually a turn, a turn and a half is a lot. So do the top and the bottom equally put the pins back in and then re retest for how it feels. Same thing on the latch side. This is a simple adjustment just by loosening up the jam nut and you can slide that cam forward and back according to, to what you need. Um, on top of having a nice tight seal, 
it's important that we don't have creosote buildup on the edge, which would also be letting air into the firebox. Each furnace comes with a nice scraper tool like this, which works perfect. And it's a simple matter of scraping the edge. I will scrape to here if there's buildup of creosote. Same thing on the door seal. If you end up with some crusty creosote ending up here, I'll do a simple scraping procedure around the edges. Your gas is gonna last a lot longer and your furnace is gonna work the most efficiently. In this tip, I wanna talk a little bit about uh, how to keep the airflow open on your classic edge or your e-classic furnace. Um, typically, uh, once a year, you may get some buildup in the air passages, which is gonna to start to reduce your efficiency, of course. Uh, it's a very, once again, like most of the maintenance on these furnaces, it's very simple, but it's important. Now I'm just gonna show you a little bit, uh, real quick here, how to uh, clean those out properly. These are the air solenoids. Uh, they're held on with a simple hose clamp. So it's a simple matter of having a 5 16 nut driver and loosening up the hose clamp on the back. This whole elbow assembly will come off. And now you're able to clean out the air passage that is going into the firebox. Um, you can see from here, it's very easy to clean. Uh, a small scraper, a flat blade screwdriver is typically what I use, and a shop back is really nice to suck everything back out. Um, after you do both of these, you do this one as well as the secondary air. After you do these, if you go into the firebox, you can actually see that the side air channels are removable. They're just held on with a couple uh, acorn nuts. So if you remove those acorn nuts, the whole um, air channel uh, cover will come off and you can easily uh, scrape out any creosote that might be built up in there along possibly with using the shop vac as well. Uh, that simply takes care of cleaning out the entire uh, air passage system on the high efficiency furnaces. We get the question a lot, how much wood is my furnace going to go through? Um, in this tip, I want to just show a little bit in our situation, uh, how much we load typically in a day and, uh, and how easy it actually is to, to load your outdoor wood furnace. Um, we are using the E-Classic 2400. Uh, we've had this in now for the last uh, seven years. This furnace is actually heating our home, um, hot water, attached garage, and our shop. So we're heating, it, this, stove, this stove has a pretty big heat load on it. Uh, so I'll just show you a little bit. Um, the E-Classics have a bypass handle, which basically is an opening straight out to the chimney to reduce smoke from coming out the door when you open it. So opening the bypass handle, the door is very simple to open. And that's pretty common what you're gonna see um, when you open your furnace to, uh, to refire. Um, the simple, and I call it the quick 10 second stir, you want to sift through your coals. It helps work up any pieces that are trapped in and you'll get a more efficient burn out of it. But basically that's, that's about it as far as stirring. I mean, once in a while, it's important if you have buildup in the corners, not creosote up down off the corners or in any of the seams. But other than that, that's typically about it. And this would be my loading now for the evening, which would give me about a 12 hour burn. About like that. Close the door. Close the bypass and you're on your way to the house. Uh, that's a typical filling average winter day, uh, heating everything that we're heating. Another question we get a lot on Facebook is, do we use water, straight water as a solution for heating or do we use an antifreeze? Um, the vast majority 99% of our customers are just running straight water. Uh, there's a select few that choose to put in antifreeze. Usually it's a case of an up north cottage 
maybe they're not there for extended periods of time and they just shut the furnace down. Uh, but your typical homeowner, once you fire up your furnace in fall, it stays running through the whole season. And uh, really, there's really no reason to put in antifreeze. Uh, antifreeze may give you peace of mind, but you have to remember it comes with a price tag. Uh, it also comes with a little bit of reduced efficiency. Uh, a 50-50 mix of antifreeze can, can reduce efficiency as much as 15%. So there's definitely pros and cons, but uh, once again, the vast majority just running straight water. In this tip, we want to address the questions we get about how safe these units actually are. Um, for starters, they're obviously outside a certain distance from the home or the building being heated. So, so first off, we're taking away the, the hazard of burning wood inside and we're removing that, that outside. So it, it takes that, that element away. Uh, the units themselves are actually spray foam insulated. Um, to the touch, they're ice cold. Um, you will see snow sitting on the roofs of, of these units after a snowstorm. You might see sun, you might see the sun melt the snow away, but without the sun out, these things are ice cold. So as far as kids, pets, whatever, um, they're ice cold to the touch and uh, takes away that, that, as, that safety aspect of it too. I'm here today to talk a little bit about what type of wood is best burnt in your central boiler outdoor wood furnace, particularly the high efficiency or gasification um, furnaces. Um, I get the question a lot, what type of wood can I burn in my, in my furnace? And really the answer to that is any, any type of wood is fine. Uh, any species of wood, obviously we want to stay away from uh, treated wood and things like that, but, but any type of clean wood is, is fine. Uh, another big question is what size of wood can I, do I have to put in? You know, I've heard that they had to, has to be split down really small or, and, and really I want to just put that myth at rest here. You can see from my wood pile, um, I don't do a lot of splitting when I get into larger stuff. Yes, obviously if it's, if it's too hard to handle and get in, you want to split that in half. But really pieces up into that eight inch, 10 inch diameter, I really don't split anymore. Another thing I wanna talk about today is the moisture content of the wood. Um, a lot of people don't realize this, but 20% moisture and less is actually considered dry wood. And that's ideally what you wanna put in your, in your outdoor wood furnace. Um, you can burn uh, greener wood than that, but what happens is you take uh, heat out of your furnace to dry that wood and, and essentially you end up burning more wood. So the wetter the wood, the more you're going to burn. Um, for example, we cut our wood in summer and we have a few months of summer for it to dry and the high efficiency furnaces work just great on that. Another Facebook question we get a lot is, are the new furnaces that much more efficient than the old furnaces? And by the new furnaces, we're talking about either the Central Boiler, the Classic Edge, or the Central Boiler E-Classic. Uh, and yes, the new furnaces are a lot more efficient. Um, we get a lot of different reports. We have a lot of them out now. But you hear anything in the range of from as little as a third less wood all the way up to 60% less wood. So uh, on average, it's pretty easy to say she burns 40% less wood than, than the old style. So that's a significant amount of wood. Uh, the other advantages of it is it just burns a lot cleaner. Um, they're not smokeless, but there is very little smoke that comes out of them. Uh, EPA calls them about 90% cleaner than, uh, than the conventional furnaces. Um, so of course, along with all of that, ash removal. There is very little ash produced. Uh, so ash clean out is... Uh, actually quite quite easier on the uh, on the high efficiency furnaces so uh, yeah comparing the two of them there are uh, definitely big advantages to going to high efficiency one of the big questions we get a lot is how fast are these units going to pay for themselves and really it's what we've noticed through the years the average home may be heating the attached garage um, four years, maybe as long as five years is pretty, pretty typical. Uh, plenty of times though, we've seen as fast as two years, older farm homes, less efficient buildings. 
Uh, the one thing you have to remember is with the fluctuations of gas and oil through the years, like for example, a couple of years ago, the gouging uh, $7 gas, um, it's just, it's just one way, really the only way to get out of that situation and have your freedom. Wood has always been a commodity that pretty much stays flat, even if you're buying your wood. And in a lot of cases, people have their own wood, which just creates even a faster payback.